right there, right there. Squat belly up. This is the game. Yeah. It's a uh, cat and mouse. Smoked a turkey. <laughs> yes. He is down. He is freaking down. Said he shot an absolute giant. Fall obsession, baby. Welcome back, everybody, to another Fall Obsession podcast episode. I am Sam Thrash with Fall Obsession, and I will be your host once again for this week's podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode. We have another special guest joining us this week on our podcast. Um, we're super privileged to have her joining us, and that is Miss uh, Brittany Barnhart. Brittany, welcome to Fall Obsession podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. We're happy to have you, and thank you for taking time this evening to, to sit down and, and talk with us. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, guys, before we get started, you all know the drill. Happens every episode, every week. We got to give a shout out to our friends over at Elite Archery. Um, Elite's done a lot for us over the past couple years, put some good equipment in our hands, and we've been laying down critters with them um, for the past few seasons. So if you guys have not checked out an Elite bow yet, um, we encourage you to go to your local dealer, see what they're all about, take the Elite Shootability Challenge. Um, you can also go to their website, EliteArchery.com, for more information and to view their full lineup. They just came out with their 2021 lineup. Bows are pretty sweet. So, again, I encourage you guys to go to your local Elite dealer and check out a new Elite bow. So, Brittany, kind of get our conversation started. Um, we, we originally kind of found you on, on Instagram with your pages and everything, and uh been following you for a little bit and watching the the content that you've produced so kind of kind of introduce yourself to our followers tell or our listeners and tell them a little bit about yourself and where this all started for you how you got into hunting and and developed this passion for the outdoors yeah so um my name is Brittany. obviously you've heard that before um <laughs> and I am originally from Florida, but I've lived in Missouri for six or seven years now, uh, clearly because the hunting is way better. Um, I really enjoy it out here. I started by going to college here, um, and I had a lot of free time to hunt, more than I ever had as a child. I kind of started hunting with my mom when I was little. I didn't really understand it a ton, but I had good times with her. Um, she learned it from her mom. So that's kind of where it um, really stems for me, um, which is kind of unique just because a lot of girls learn from their dads. Um, and my mom was the primary uh, person for me. Uh, and then when I came here, I was close to my great uncle, which is who is on my social media a lot. He's really funny, even though he doesn't know it. So I try to record him as much as I can as much as he'll let me <laughs> and um you know he's really super old school he really just wears plaid and jeans to go hunting which is so funny um deer kick us off sometimes to be completely honest um but it's really just about the experience i think that we're having together especially for him getting older and I try to be patient with that and understanding and just remember that we're there to have fun no matter what happens. So that's kind of, I've developed into, a, I guess, a more mature hunter the last three or four years bow hunting. Um, me and my uncle rifle hunted together a lot. And um, so that's kind of where I started. I, so I hadn't always been bow hunting. Um, I just wanted to do it because I wanted to have closer encounters with deer, and the closer encounters have definitely been so cool. So much cooler, honestly, for me than it ever was rifle hunting, but a lot of times for him, it's easier for him to rifle hunt just because he is getting older, so I do try to continue doing that with him um, every year just so we can stay doing you know, having an event, you know, or a time together hunting every year at least. Right, absolutely. So, exactly how long have y'all been hunting together? Um, pretty much since I moved to Missouri, I started hunting with my uncle. He kind of encouraged me to get more passionate about it just because it was like the only thing that, 
I won't say it was the only thing they have in common, but it's definitely the most prominent thing, and he just always wanted to go do it. He's also really big into fishing, but I'm not as into fishing. So he would always beg me to go hunting, and I was in school at the time, so I was trying to study too, but I'm, I feel like the more we went, the more fun I had and the more I wanted to hunt. So that's why I do it so often now. Um, but we, I really got into turkey hunting with him um, when I first moved here because it actually was in the spring, the spring of 2013, I think. And so pretty much ever since then, I've been hunting with him. Very Every cool. season. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Every animal we can hunt. That was going to be my next question was what all you guys find yourself hunting because you mentioned the turkey and, and all that, but I, I was going to ask what all you guys hunt. Sounds like you do a lot. <laughs> um, I really love deer hunting. It's absolutely my favorite. Um, but in the off season, we try to coyote hunt just to, you know, put an effort at keeping the numbers down and protecting, um, the new um, turkeys and, you know, fawns that come in the spring. And so I'm not as into it, but it's it's just a good time for us to sit down and hang out and talk, you know, because coyote stands are about 15 to 20 minutes long at most. So that's pretty much, I mean, turkey, coyote, deer, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I have duck hunted before. It kind of falls over deer season, so I haven't been, I haven't really put any effort in trying to substitute the two, you know. Yeah. So maybe in a few years I could try a little more of that after I kill enough deer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it shouldn't be substituting. It should be adding two, right? <laughs> yeah, true. I always feel like, I have to substitute one or the other, so that's why I would say that, I guess. Just because it seems like every time there's a cold front is the best time to duck hunt, but it's also the best time to deer hunt, you know? Yeah, that that is very true. I, I agree with that. So, so you guys are, are in Missouri, but I, I believe I've seen on, on your pages that you guys do some trips to other states and, and stuff like that. Where where else do you guys find yourself going on a semi-frequent basis, at least? Well, um, I wouldn't say that we I guess we don't frequent the same places every year just because um, you have to put in points for states to draw in. All the states that I typically hunt out of state our draw states. Um, so we put in for Colorado, um, which is just, I think, muzzleloader, because you can do over-the-counter archery in Colorado anytime you want, in a lot of units. And even the unit I hunted with my uncle this year. But Wyoming, we can hunt every three years. In Iowa, we can hunt every three years, which we have in alternate positions. So this year... I could have hunted Iowa, and next year I can hunt Wyoming because two years ago I hunted Wyoming. Gotcha. So, I mean, I guess those are kind of the frequent ones just because they're kind of close and we can get to them easier. Um, I typically, Caitlin usually comes to, I'm, I'm sure you guys know who Caitlin Moss Outdoors is, to just because she's on a lot of my stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've just been best friends for so long. Um a lot of times we try to make time for each other during season as well or film for each other if we need. And she goes on the Western hunts with my uncles just because my uncles aren't really good at navigating because they have to pull out a really big paper map. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know it takes up your cold car hood. And so looking at that on the trailhead is in dark is obviously not the best option so we're like okay here's our phones it's on x you know and my uncles have like flip phones so to them they're like oh my gosh you know onyx is seriously so helpful during that time so they're like we need you like we can't <laughs> do it without your onyx on your phone so um 
This year we went to Colorado though for my uncle's elk hunt, which they waited so long to draw that unit. Um, it was supposed to be really um, like a limited number draw, which it was for muzzleloader, but I think they had a lot of over-the-counter bow tags. So just, and then a ton of recreational users. So the whole top of the mountain was just full of people. And oh man, it just it's so tough for my uncles to hike. Um, it was like three miles in and my uncle literally told me I got so mad at him. He was like, I'm going to kill over and die right here. <laughs> and I was like, you better not. <laughs> Cause I can't carry you out of here. So, oh shoot. But, um, then he got a snack and some water and he was like, I, 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 I didn't mean that, you know, I'm okay. And I was like quit saying that kind of stuff so anyways it's definitely getting harder for him every year which is such a bummer because i know it's just his dream to you know kill an elk and you know live like he used to when he was younger yeah so but i mean it still brings him like a lot of joy i think with me being there and even caitlin being there and just you know all laughing at camp and stuff and just you know enjoying other parts of hunting you know yeah like the getting ready and all that stuff and the hiking around and scouting and looking i think he really enjoys that but elk hunting is very hard and if you are even the slightest bit unprepared it is an extreme challenge yes so we are always a little bit unprepared. So, <laughs> I mean, it kind of makes it fun and funny, and I make jokes after. But in the moment, I'm like, oh, my gosh, how could I have not thought of this? You know? Yeah. But either way, it was a great exercise, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's been really, really cool to watch, like I said, and, and it's a it's a really, really unique and awesome dynamic that the two of you guys have, and and it, it's really awesome that, that you get to share that um, and and enjoy his company on top of all that, so very, very cool. For sure. He's really entertaining. I mean, I'm sure you've seen him in the videos. He's really funny, um, even though he doesn't know that. <laughs> So, tell me, uh, um, I'm kind of segueing into something else here a little bit, but tell me what inspired you to share all this, all not only your experiences, but your, your time with him as well. What inspired you to, to share that and put that out there um, for followers on, on Instagram, for example? What, uh, what was your motivation there? Well, when I first started... Um... I was initially just sharing me and like per my personal experiences, but my uncle was there a lot in the beginning, especially when I was kind of kickstart learning. Um, I mean, I really learned a lot about hunting when I started with my uncle, just because he would stop and take the time to show me things and talk about different, um, you know, reasons why certain things happen or why did you, deer did this or what kind of trees we were walking past even um so i shared a lot of me and him in the beginning as well um but just took i kind of just was always interested in social media and kind of putting out there at first it was just kind of about me and him and our i guess our experiences and you know maybe making people laugh um it kind of grew into how much respect and how much um, importance I put on conservation later on, uh, and how truly important I think it is, uh, especially as the world changes, it's changed so much in seven years. So the, my initial motivation is certainly not my motivation. Now, my right. motivation now is more so that the clean meat that I'm getting and can you even get me at the grocery store? You know, in the past six months, people haven't been able to even get me on the shelves at grocery stores. So, you know, I've had a lot of growth in my social media experience. I certainly think 
it does boil down to the entertainment of it though for me i love laughing and having a good time and i think that my personality is really entertaining when i get it going <laughs> um so and i think that i bounce really well off of him and we can just have like a really entertaining conversation for other people to enjoy you know that can't get out as much and do as much hunting as maybe me and him have been able to in the past right um and i've kind of transitioned from my freedom from school to my freedom in real life um my jobs are typically only in the summer um so i make a large chunk of my money in the summer and then it lasts me all fall so i'm just able to keep that momentum going with him and i think it really helps him you know get through I think it helps him get through a lot, to be honest, just because we've been through so much. Um, and just that he looks forward to that time that we have together in the woods. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not all about me anymore, necessarily, even though it's, I mean, I tell a lot of the story. It's still there's like a lot of different pieces, you know what I mean? Like the conservation and then the meat and then the time I spend with him and all that. Jazz. Yeah. It, it, it's both of y'all story. It, it, it's not, it's not just singled out to, to one or both of y'all. It, like I said, it's, it's kind of a dynamic if you will. For sure. Very cool. So also kind of on the topic of, of your content and, and what you, what you share online, you've you've put out some videos you have a youtube channel what uh i I mean i feel like i feel like photos and documenting outdoor and hunting experiences kind of through that avenue is is one thing but once you really dive off into the videoing and the self-filming and all that that, that's a whole nother animal what what put you in in that realm what what motivated you to to start doing that and then how have you learned techniques and, and stuff along the way? Wow. So it really has been a huge learning curve. Um, I, I've always wanted to put YouTube videos out of my experiences or videos out somehow. I did not necessarily know that that was going to be through YouTube just because i liked the idea of showing what like trying to capture all that was going on capturing all that is going on is so much more of a challenge (laughs) than i ever dreamed of that it would be i in my mind it was like this simple task that i was like oh this will be a breeze getting all this stuff that i need and you know putting it together and honest to be completely honest with you i watched no how-to videos i dove completely headfirst in self-teaching myself. I have used every single camera brand. I, from the worst to the best, I've, I've experimented with GoPros, POV cameras, just literally everything. Um, I have used Facebook marketplace to my advantage by buying used stuff. Um, I would suggest that to anyone just because I've saved a lot of money. I've been able to trade things out. Um, I've had things break, but that happens, you know, when you're using things in the outdoors, it's just not going to, you know, stay in pristine shape. Um, It's been a lot to get me to the editing room. Um, That kind of thing is like, I could be spending 120 hours editing, which is a lot on one video that I put out for 12 minutes. And it's, Sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, only 200 people saw that. Wow, so much effort, you know, for such little reward. But it's, I try not to think of it like that because I've begun to watch more YouTubers that are like, if you're doing it for the views, then you should stop doing it right now because that's not what it's, that's not what it's about. And it's true that that isn't what it's about. And a lot of people want all of that. And I understand but if you aren't enjoying the process, then you won't even make it that far because it's just, it's every bit of it is challenging. And sitting in the stand by myself, running the camera, ranging the deer, 
drawing my bow back, hoping the deer doesn't move or see me during any of this is one of the greatest challenges that I've ever taken on literally ever. And sometimes it does steal the enjoyment from me because I'm like, I could have shot that deer and I did it because it wasn't in the frame. And sometimes that's like super devastating. And I know that a lot of people who have ever even tried self filming one time can relate to that. It's a, it's a very interesting topic because I, I do think so many more people are, are trying it and are getting out there and doing it, whether they post the videos online or not. And, and I can, I can very much relate to, to your experience because when, when we first started fall obsession and even a little bit before that, it it was the same way for me. Uh, I, I learned so much and pretty much everything, at least the foundation off of trial and error, you know, no, no classes, no assistance, no tutorials or anything like that. It was just, seeing what I was doing, comparing it to other people and figuring out how they were doing what they were doing pr- pretty much. And it, it, it's a process. It's a, like you said, a huge learning curve, um, for sure. And, and a challenge for, for anybody. But the cool thing is that anybody can do it. Um, you know, obviously the better the equipment, the better, the better the outcome is going to be, but you can do a ton of videoing on just a cell phone these days, which, you know, if if that's all if that's all folks want to do then then more power to them but that's uh that's really awesome that you're able to to grow in that and and bring that to not just your your followers and like you say not just for the views but also so that you and and your family and those close to you can look back on those memories at some point and actually have a a physical video that you can watch to to remember them that that's really awesome for sure and it has taken me years to get my uncle to allow me to sit there and film him because in the past (laughs) he'll say get that thing off of me and I'm like but you're entertaining and I want to tell a story so I need you to tell me what happened (laughs) so it's it's he's come a long way for me which i really appreciate and i was able to share his colorado elk hunt um pretty good like pretty decent because he was willing to talk about things and you know um share his experience every day yeah that was really really cool very cool that's awesome for sure so and and I'm I'm diving a little bit into kind of the the technical side of it for mainly for those folks that do self filming and and do their own productions. What kind of what kind of software are you using right now to to edit your videos? Um, personally, I started out using Adobe, so I have continued because I have invested so many hours in um, learning all about it. Um, I I actually did start watching YouTube how-to videos once I got to that point just because it was there was just so much that I needed to know how to do and what buttons to press and use and tools and this and that. Um, so I just stuck with Adobe. There are other um, there are other uh, editing softwares. Um, I'm pretty sure most of them cost money, so it's, I don't necessarily know that there is a free one unless you just have an Apple computer and I think you just use the Apple, whatever Apple provides you. Right. But, um, I, so I don't have anything to relate it to. Some people tell me that they like Adobe better than Final Cut, but I guess it truly is about preference. Because it's just like you shoot Elite and I shoot Matthews, and that's just our preference, right? That's right. <laughs> so it's all about what works for you. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. So we'll turn it back to back to the hunting side of things. Tell us about this year so far for you. Um, what kind of hunts have you had so far this season, um, and have you had any luck yet? So I have been focused, I mean, I was supposed to hunt Kansas and Illinois, 
Um, but I have been focusing on Missouri and honestly, things just, this whole year is just really whack, but the weather is so whack too right now. It's so hot. And I'm not saying that it's not huntable because it is. Um, but it's definitely unfortunate considering deer will move a lot better in the cold. And the only time that I've really seen any mature deer moving this year was when we had this really great cold front. It literally dropped 40 degrees. I truly think that's why I'm sick right now. But, um, it, we had a 40 degree temperature drop after a rain, which I had sat in the rain for two hours oh, man. as the temperature dropped, which it was miserable, but the outcome was so amazing. Like um, the mature deer that I had on trail camera in the summer stepped out, um, you know, fully out of velvet and he was absolutely monster and totally gorgeous. And I could not control myself. I was shaking and <laughs> i was so excited um I, I did post that on my instagram too no i don't think i posted it public it was just in my like reels so but i was absolutely shaken by it and so grateful to just at least see him um the thing about my uncle's property is it's set up for rifle hunting so he was very far away or else i would have definitely taken him but um just seeing him was more than enough felt like success to me so i am hunting him i named him bermuda buck just because he was there's this like little patch of timber it's like the shape of a bermuda triangle i can't even say that word <laughs> but um he was there when i first saw him on trail camera so that's why i named him which mostly because I just couldn't think of anything better. But anyway, he's, I would say he's probably 150, 160 class, which is plenty, plenty for me. That's a stud right <laughs> there. That's a good dude. Yeah, for sure. I was very excited when I saw him. I miss him <laughs> every day. <laughs> <laughs> so I am just trying to, obviously hunt the right winds and stuff and i just got better so tuesday we're supposed to have a temperature drop and that'll be i mean i sat out tonight but i was like playing distance but nothing came out so which i'm grateful for well best of luck hope that uh hope that you're able to put them on the ground i know me too if i can't do it in archery i probably will still do it in rifle just because i really want them and i don't want the neighbor to have them which <laughs> just because when the orange army steps out they just kind of blast everything and i'm like no please not him <laughs> I, I hear you it happens everywhere it does so anyways i'll probably still rifle hunt him if i can get him with my bow in the next like five days because that's all i got well, Brittany, I, I really appreciate you taking some time, um, like I said at the beginning, to, to come on the podcast with us and share all this. But before we cut you loose, um, we got a few questions that we want to hit you with, if, if that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So question number one is, what is one of your most memorable hunts and or outdoor experiences that comes to mind? Um. I would say the first buck I ever killed in Iowa, which was with my uncle. Um, it was second shotgun season. It was the most memorable for me just because it was my first buck ever. Nothing crazy. Um, it was actually pretty much the smallest buck Iowa has ever seen. But uh, it was really so cool for me and him to be there and just – my, the deer pretty much went down right there and we both watched it and we just looked at each other and we were so happy after hunting in like negative degree, negative 20 degree wind chills for like five or six days straight. We just oh hugged each other and it was just 
so great, really. That's awesome. I couldn't have asked for a better first experience killing a deer. Very cool. That is awesome. All right, second question. What is a bucket list hunt that you have not gotten to be a part of yet? Okay, so this is, I love this question because I have <laughs> one. Um, I would love to do a moose hunt in Alaska. Very cool. Yes. What's the reasoning behind that? Um, I watch a lot of videos about Alaska and like a lot of shows I like are based in Alaska and I just think it looks really cool and like I really actually would love to fish there and uh, I don't know I just think it looks really pretty and I really like the way moose meat tastes so I think I could you know have the best of both worlds um, with a moose hunt. That sounds pretty awesome right there. Very cool experience. All right, so the third and final question. Um, we always ask folks for um, some advice relevant to, to a topic that we've talked about. And I know that you we, we talked a little bit about kind of the, the self-filming, self-production side um, and you sharing that content on your pages. And I, I, I know you actually put a, put a YouTube video out regarding this um, here recently on your channel. But tell, give us a, a piece of advice for, for self-filmers and, and tell us a little bit about the equipment that you use to film your productions. For sure. Um, I guess my best advice is don't miss out on that deer if you can't get it on film just because the feeling is so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure the feeling is so much worse if you don't get him um, in versus if you just don't get him on film. Um, but I just a few um, tidbits is that I use a Sony handy cam and I think it's a really great um self-filming camera for first timers and people who have been doing it for a while in general it's just super easy camera to um, get on wildlife and film and um, it's just all around easy like user friendly um, so you know if you have your friend come one time it'd be easy for them to film you or uh, just in general it's and it's not really heavy if you mount it on anything. So it's it's just great all around. And you're not adding a ton of weight to your pack either. Gotcha. So that's um, a tool that I really have been using to my advantage. And the, the screen flips around too. So you can film yourself and then whip it around really quick and film, you know, out in the field if something starts happening. So that's, you know, really useful. Yeah. What kind of what kind of mounts or, or mounting systems do you use to to put your cameras in the setup with you? Um, I I have used out on a limb this entire time, so I have no pre previous experience except for Muddy. I have one of the like twenty dollars camera arms, and that thing was a piece of junk. <laughs> um, so I would not recommend that one. But uh, I his old camera arms, I. I became friends with Matt over the years, which is the owner of Out on a Limb, so that's why I've stayed loyal. But uh, his camera arms were really heavy before and, you know, not as user-friendly. But this year he came out with um, the Reach, which was uh, designed by Garrett. Um, he is uh, – his stuff is called Modern Assassin. That's what it's called. And uh, it is literally the lightest camera arm and the lightest setup, it is so easy to mount. Um, there's, I mean, I just crank it and level it. It's, it literally takes me seconds. Um, I can do it in the dark very easy. Like I say, super light. Um, my fluid head is also very light, fortunately. So I'm not in, when you're carrying like sticks in, you're saddling and you're doing the, you know, the walk-in setup, light items 
are super important, especially to me because I'm a girl and carrying a lot of weight isn't necessarily something I want to do, especially when I'm already carrying water, snacks, you know what I mean? Right. There's just so many things. When you look at it, you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm just carrying in a whole day pack worth of stuff here. But so I just think for me, it's important to be as light as I can. And that's the lightest arm that I've ever used. And I it's really worked super great. And it's, you know, I haven't had any issues getting on deer. I've had deer look right at me. Um, And I mean, the arm kind of pokes off the tree, you know, so it's but it's they've never spooked or anything so i know it's not like distracting them or looking you know off or anything so i'm super excited to be using it and like i say the lightweight is super important i mean if you're i've been able to mount my white lens on it which is a very heavy lens um for people who are you know really into filming just because it's more of an expensive piece um, and i've had absolutely no issues with the arm, you know, bending down at all. So that's awesome too. Absolutely. Very cool. Very good info. For sure. Well, Brittany, once again, I really appreciate you taking some time this evening to to talk with us and, and come on the podcast. It's been fun. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Real quick. Um, b- before I go into my spiel here at the end, um, Obviously, as we've mentioned several times, you're on social media, you're on YouTube. Tell our listeners how they can find you. Um, I th- I think my channel is just under my normal name, which is just Brittany Barnhart's. Uh, and then my social medias are under Britt Barnhart. So just I just abbreviated my first name. I think someone already took Brittany Barnhart. <laughs> so <laughs> I just went to next best. Uh and that's that's it really i just tried to make it as simple as possible nothing wrong with that we'll we'll be sure also to tag you in our in our post that way uh that way people can can go directly to your to your pages so we'll make yeah, it even thank easier you so much. <laughs> not a problem well guys um thank y'all for listening please go follow uh Brittany on instagram and subscribe to her youtube channel check out uh, her content and and follow along with her and her uncle's journey um it, it's really fun to watch as we've said and if you guys haven't already be sure that you go and follow fall obsession we're on facebook instagram twitter um, subscribe to our youtube channel and hit that follow and subscribe button for This podcast, we're on all the major podcast apps, so wherever you get your podcast, you can subscribe. That way you get notified every Monday morning when we drop a new episode. Um, Also on our website, fallobsession.com, which is the hub for all of our content, there is a page on there, fallobsession.com slash podcast, where you guys can go to either suggest topics, ask questions, or, or anything really that you want us to cover in a future episode, and we will make sure that it gets thrown in there. Uh, we take criticism constructively too, so if you have any uh, suggestions for us, we we would love to hear them. So, Brittany, thank you again. I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Well, it was our pleasure. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Thank you all for listening, and we will catch you guys again next Monday morning for another Fall Obsession podcast episode.